Ladies and gentlemen, Joni and Bill Feldman, no one deserves this award of distinction more than you. Bravo, come up and get it. Thank you, Sherry. Thank all of you. Uh, before I give you some personal thoughts about all of you, um, I want to congratulate Dr. Merkin, the chairs, Pat, Elizabeth, Bettina, the dinner committee, Florence, Beth, Alexander. Um, this place is awesome. And it leaves me, it leaves me sort of speechless, and that's, well, not speechless, maybe in about two minutes I'll be speechless. And that's for the first time. Here we are in downtown Los Angeles on a Friday night. There's always something that I've been going through my mind that there's something special about all of you. There's something uniquely American. It started about 10 years ago when someone told me that in Europe, people were just beginning to fund foundations. Most of the things were done by government. And here we are in our country and what is it that we, which goes on? Are we the only people in the world, Americans, that get three solicitations by email, a phone call, a personal letter for some kind of cause? Is that what's unique about us? It's sort of a clue, but I don't think that is it. Is it that we give more per capita than anybody else? You know, that isn't it. So what is it that it's actually been on my mind? And so I went to an old friend of mine, or I call it Uncle Google, and there I found out that there was a clergyman that was considered to be the father of philanthropy in America. And he said the one thing that was unique about Americans is that they give individually and they give voluntarily. And this man was named Cotton Mather and he was born in 1660 in Boston. And there's something about our roots those that go back to the 17th century or the 21st century, that we came here for freedom and the freedom to choose. And so what each and every one of you do that I really and truly wish to honor is that you give voluntarily, you give from your heart, you have a wonderful selection, you give whatever you want, to, we save the sky, we save the earth, clean the sky, give to enemies, we, we do this, and it's something that you should all be proud of. And I'm thankful that you considered Stop Cancer is something worthwhile giving to. And I assure you that we will work very hard to do a job that you would be proud of. But I'm a little on the um, serious side. Um, I'd like to bring my wife, Joni, who, she's from the, she's from the heart. And here, on the day, the first time that you were tested, you became my hero.
I'm honored, touched, and reminded tonight that life is not measured more. Okay, do I have to start over? Can you hear that better? Okay. I'm honored, touched, and reminded tonight that life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but the number of moments that take our breath away. Tonight is one of those moments for me. I'm engulfed in a room, surrounded by my circle of strength, my devoted family, my dearest friends, the brave survivors, and the stop cancer crusaders, all of who have enabled me to stand up here today cancer-free. Thirty years ago, Gilda Radner was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and her strength and bravery to fight this disease is summed up in her quote. Some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Life is about not knowing, having the courage to change, taking the moment and making the most of it without knowing what's going to happen next. Her inspirational words I hold very dear to my heart. We never know what lies ahead. We can only make the best of the moment we are in right now. And at this moment, I am one very lucky lady. Because as Sherry told you, some brilliant researchers discovered the first drug, other than standard chemotherapy, to enable ovarian cancer people to stay in remission longer. I'm on that drug, and I've been in remission for 18 months. Today, we live in an era of hope so we can only imagine what tomorrow holds. That's why two years ago, Bill and I gave a seed grant to Dr. Cass, a UCLA researcher whose goal it is to diagnose ovarian cancer at its earliest curable stages. The good news, the funding has gone to good use, as Dr. Cass has had promising results discovering a marker that can identify early curable ovarian cancer with a simple blood test in a routine office visit. I said that. Oh, I'm sorry. He went to USC. He's at USC. Did I say UCLA? He's at USC. The even better news, our initial investment has led to a significant additional funding for this USC researcher. You know, I'm a UCLA girl. And I never thought I'd say these words, but fight on. We all know there are no guarantees. There are no promises. But there are all of us and our collective strength that can create an era of a cancer-free world for future generations. And always, there is hope. Thank you all for this wonderful moment that I'll continue to cherish Every day I am here.